Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Uh, previously, we worked on adding in player animations to our player game object in our world scene. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to their source code up to this point, as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now that we have our basic animations in place for moving our character around our world scene, uh, what we need to do next is we actually need to fix it so that way when our input uh, stops and our game object reaches our destination, our animation stops playing. And instead we would show our idle frame for the direction we're facing. And so to do that, we need to go ahead and add some functionality to our base character class. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new method uh, update which will basically be called uh, from our update method in our world scene and so basically this is going to be called every frame and what we'll do is we're going to check to see if our animation uh, if our is moving is done and if we're done moving we'll go ahead and stop our animation so what we'll do is let's come to our character class and below our move character method let's go ahead and add in our new method update and we'll have one parameter uh, called time and basically time, this is going to be the DOM high resolution timestamp uh, that we'll get from Phaser. And basically this is the timestamp of when your last frame uh, rendered was completed. And then that way you'll basically have a timestamp of when we're running our current method. And this can be useful for when you want to have logic in your update method uh, for tracking how frequently you're doing something. Um, a good example is if, let's say, if our character moved and we don't want to have them move every frame and so we want to do it every so many seconds, we can use that timestamp to calculate that value. Um, we're not going to do anything with our player game object, but later on for our NPCs, we will use this value um, for creating some variety in how they move around our scene. Uh, since we'll be using our NPCs, we'll go ahead and add to our base character class now, and then that way we can expect it. And so now inside our update method, what we'll want to do is we're just going to check if we are currently moving, then we can go ahead and return early and do nothing. If we have now completed our movement, this is where we'll want to go ahead and stop our animation. So what we'll do is we're going to reference our phaser game object, we'll reference our anims property on it, and we're going to call stop. And this is going to go ahead and stop our animation that's currently playing. And then what we should be able to do is if we jump over to our world scene, we should be able to go ahead and call our update method, and then that way we can test our changes. Uh, so in our world scene, uh, we'll go have to add in our time parameter as well. And then at the bottom of our update method, uh, we'll reference our player, and let's go ahead and call our update method and provide time. And what we should be able to do is we jump over to our scene, which we'll go ahead and test. And so we'll see our character moves. We get to our destination and we stop. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to add some logic to go ahead and reset our idle frame when our animation stops. And so the reason for that is if we change our frame rate at all, our game object, if it's in the middle of our animation when we stop it, what will happen is our game object will stay on that frame. And this can create a weird looking effect if you imagine our player has one of its legs moving. Uh, so um, when our character is moving, we have our legs going up and down. And if we ended up ending on one of our frames where we're the left or right foot's forward, it's going to look very awkward if they're standing there. And so we're going to go ahead and reset our idle frame back to our middle frame from our sprite sheet. Uh, so to go ahead and do that, what we'll do is before we call our stop animation, we're going to go ahead and get a reference to our current animation that's playing. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do const, we're going to call this idle frame, and we're going to say equal to this, our game object, our anims property. Let's get our current animation, and we are going to reference our frames. And from our frames, we're going to get our middle frame. Uh, so when we defined our animations in our animations JSON file, our middle frame and all of these here are always referencing the idle frame uh, for that current animation. Uh, so if we go over to our images and our character PNG, we'll see our middle one is always where our character is just standing there. And so by us referencing the first index, that's going to be that middle frame, uh, since this will be the first index in our array that we provided. And so after we grab that frame, uh, what we want to do is grab the frame, and we want to go ahead and grab the name. 
And so with the name, we can go ahead and use that to go ahead and set the frame. And so what we'll do is we're just going to add an if statement. And if there is no idle frame, we're not going to try to do anything. But if we do have an idle frame, we'll go ahead and do our switch statement. We'll do our direction. And then what we'll do is let's go over to our player class. Let's copy our logic for our switch statement here instead of rewrite our code. And so what we're going to do is for one of our directions, we'll go ahead and set our frame. Uh, so we're going to get rid of our if statement and we're just going to do our game object. We're going to call the set frame method and we'll go ahead and provide that idle frame. And then let's go ahead and import our exhaustive guard and we'll go ahead and save. And so if we come back to our scene, we should build a test. And what should happen is when our animation is done, we just reset our idle frame just to be safe. And then that way our character is always in our idle position when we finish moving. All right, so with our safety guard in place, one last thing we're going to do is we're going to add some logic to when we create our character. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in some logic for what idle frame should be used uh, for the direction that the player is currently facing. And so the reason we're going to do that is if when our player is added to our scene, if it's facing a direction that's not down, we want to make sure we go ahead and provide the right frame uh, for that direction. Uh, so right now we're passing in our asset frame of seven. And so if we want to start off with our player facing to the right, uh, we'll always have our player facing down, even though our direction is indicating to the right. And so to go ahead and fix this, we're going to update our configuration to allow us to provide all of those idle frames for each of our various directions. And so to go ahead and do this, what we're going to do is when we create our character instance, what we want to be able to do is we want to pass in an object. And so I'm just going to call this idle frame. And on this object, we want to provide our various directions and we want to provide the frame that's associated with that direction. Uh, so as an example, if I'm facing down, then I want to go ahead and use my seventh frame for that idle state versus if I'm facing up, I want to go ahead and use one. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and add in those various directions and let's add in our values. Uh, so if we don't have a direction, we'll just assume down. If we have left, we'll do 10. And if we have right, we'll have four. And so for this object, what we'll need to do is we'll need to go ahead and update our character class to expect a configuration like this. And since we'll be passing in our idle frames like this, we won't actually need our asset frame anymore. So if we jump over to our character class, let's go ahead and update our configuration. And so we're going to go ahead and remove our asset frame. Let's just go ahead and remove that property. Then what we'll do is beneath our callback, We'll go ahead and add a new property and we're going to make a new type def. So let's call this character idle frame config. And we're going to call this idle frame config. So then let's go ahead and just copy this here. And we'll go ahead and add in our name. And so we have our character idle frame config. And so for our config, basically for our properties, what these are going to be is they're going to be a number and then we'll have our keys for our direction. So our left, right, up, down, and none. So if we go ahead and copy this, I'm just going to paste it a few times and let's go ahead and update those. So we're going to have right, we'll have up, we'll have down, and then we're going to go ahead and have none. So then what we should be able to do is down in our uh, constructor, we'll, we'll go ahead and assign that property. Uh, so we are going to do this, our idle frame config. Oh, actually we need to add that property real quick. So let's come back up here. We're going to grab idle frame config. Let's go ahead and add that protected property. And we'll go ahead and add in our type. And let's go ahead and copy that. And now what we should be able to do is down our constructor, we should be able to go ahead and reference that. All right, so we have our idle frame config will equal to our config, that idle frame config. So then we just need to fix when we create our game object, so it'll no longer be our asset frame. Instead, we'll want to determine our idle frame from our direction that we receive uh, in our configuration. Uh, so to do that, we'll add a new method to our class. So let's do this dot, and we'll make this protected. So we'll do git idle frame. All right, then we just need to go ahead and add that method. So if we go ahead and come down below our update method, 
what we'll do is we'll add in get idle frame and inside here uh, basically all we want to do is we want to go ahead and return this our idle frame config and then for our key this is going to be the direction of where our player is currently our character is currently facing and let's jump back over ah uh, yes so instead of idle frame we call this idle frame config let's go ahead and save and what we should be able to do is be able to test our changes so now uh, when our game restarts we should see our player still facing down and we have the right idle frame and then if we move our character around everything should still function however if we jump over to our world scene what we should be able to do is update our direction so we do up now our character will face up and we grab the correct frame for that direction and then likewise if we try right our character will now face right when it's added to the scene all right and so real quick what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and fix our types on our player so we come back to our configuration instead of asset frame uh, we're gonna go ahead and ignore our idle frame config since we're passing that in all right, so one last thing we're going to do is we're going to add one more property to our character configuration. And what we're going to do is we're going to update our config to allow us to provide the origin for our game objects. Uh, so for our various characters that we're going to add and our NPCs, uh, some of these might need a different origin than the default that we're setting. Uh, so what we'll do is for this uh, configuration, we'll make it optional. And if it's not provided, we'll use zero. Uh, if one is provided, we'll use that value. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come up to our configuration after our asset key. Uh, what we'll do is let's add a new property. And for this type, uh, what this will be, this is going to be another coordinate. And we're going to call this origin and we will make it optional. So we'll go ahead and put it in our brackets. And if one is not provided, what we'll do is we'll set X property to zero and our Y to zero. And then what we can do is down here, we'll go ahead and add that property to our character class. We'll have a protected origin property. And we're going to make that a coordinate. So we're just going to copy this here. Let's paste that. We'll come to our config and we'll do this. We'll do our origin is going to be equal to our config.origin. And so what we'll do is we'll check if our config origin was provided. If it was, uh, then what we'll do is we'll do... We'll make a copy of that object. So we'll do config.origin. Otherwise, we're going to default to our x and y of 0. And then what we can do is when we call our setOrigin method, we're going to go ahead and reference this.origin.x and this.origin.y. And then what we're going to do is for our player game object, we're just going to modify our origin on our Y value just to move our character up a little bit. Uh, so we're going to do origin. And then what we'll do is for X, we'll do 0. Y, we're going to do 0 0.2. And go ahead and save. And so what that's going to do with our player game object is going, it's just going to update the alignment a little bit. So then that way our player moves. Uh, our sprite is not on top of some of our other sprites here. And then that way we should get a nicer effect uh, when it's moving around our scene. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, uh, we're going to go ahead and work on updating some of the properties tied to our phaser camera. Uh, so we'll be adding in some logic to have the camera follow our player game object. So then that way, as we move throughout our scene, we'll be able to explore a level. Uh, we're going to add in logic to have some safety bounds. So then that way our camera can only show our level. And then that way uh, we won't show any black background if we go outside the bounds of our currently defined world and uh, we'll do a few other things uh, so as a reminder there's a link in the description of this video to the clear source code for this video and as always thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the content if you did please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released for more great phaser 3 content please send the links on your screen now